why bubble gum works in darker colored water <laughs> on old hickory and zone, I have no clue. Uh, but I have lost more money to tournament anglers that are throwing pink <laughs> flukes. I, I, I wish I knew. Yeah. The award-winning Tennessee Wildcast is on the air with the latest on hunting, fishing, boating, wildlife watching, and all things outdoors. Make welcome your host, drummer and outdoor expert novice, Jason Harmon. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Tennessee Wildcast. We're glad you're tuning in. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Another great show for you today. Mr. Jason Holland is back to talk about the A-Rig. The A-Rig. I, I said it. I you said did. It. You said the A-Rig. <laughs> We've been trying to call it the Umbrella Rig, and we keep calling it the A-Rig, yeah. Alabama Rig. <laughs> it's all right. Whatever. Everybody, it's the Umbrella Rig, sometimes referred to as the Alabama Rig or the A-Rig. Now we're all on the same page. Yeah, now we're now we're here. And, and some fall fishing techniques that we haven't. Uh, gotten to get to that the last show kind of ran over a little bit so we'll touch on some of that today as well but hey thanks for being here uh if you don't know who jason holland is he's a great fisherman he comes on the show quite often we're glad he's here uh at jason holland fishing you got all the social media platforms all of them even tiktok check him out come on check me out Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, make sure you, you, you subscribe and follow because we are consistently adding to that. Yeah, um, cool. And again, may mainly focus on the education piece, and we'll throw some hook sets or big fish in there to keep you halfway interested. But <laughs> really around education. That's uh, that's my passion. That's my heart. And um, check it out. Come yeah, on. we'd love to have you. Yeah, interact. Good, Send a good message. Good info. Good info. Well, I mean, uh, good info. Not good looking guy to look at, but I mean, it's what God gave me to work yeah. with. So <laughs> go with it. So. Yeah, We'll, we'll go with it. Yeah, but interact. Make sure you send a message. You got questions. I mean, I, I can be another resource on top of the many resources resources that are out there. So yeah. check me out. Hey, you know, Jason's been doing some real secret uh, episodes with us. You know, showing some secrets behind some of the techniques that he that he throws. Yeah. And, and uh, anyway, on the show quite often. So we appreciate the help you give us to educate educate those fishermen out there. Well, I appreciate you giving me the platform and putting up with me. Todd editing me, making me sound good, because Lord knows I need all the help the mic can get. So, <laughs> thank you, Todd. Uh, I see you got your cashing fishing rod on, hat on today. How's I that? do. You've been talking with them much. You've uh, you been know, fishing, been throwing a cashing rod. You know, I have. Uh, I have not been fishing enough. Uh, Mr. Don, when I got here earlier, asked me, "Hey, you done any fishing?" I said, "Well, n- not enough. I- I've never got to the point where I fished enough. Yeah, I now I you. fish probably more than I should. Ask my wife; she'll <laughs> gladly tell you I do more than I should. But uh, no, it's uh, you know, again, we-, we-, we talked about catching fishing rods a little bit on the show, uh, and I'll do a-, a plug for them real quick because yeah. they are uh, they're my favorite rod, uh-huh. and one of the big reasons is not only the technology, but first and foremost, they're made here." And so, in this day and age, not in this building, not not necessarily here in the Tennessee Wildlife <laughs> Resource Agency basement, but when I say here, I mean in the United States. Yeah, uh, which is to me, uh, that's something that I I look for. Yeah, uh, when I go to buy things, I want to try to support uh, local men and, local men and women here. Uh, in the country that are making products, uh, not that nothing wrong with using products from overseas, but again, it, to me, it's something that I I look for. Yeah, and, and if I can support, yep. um, But not only just that, not just because, what I don't want to do is I don't want to buy a U.S. made product and it not be a good product, right? I want to get my value right. for the money. Right. And I'm not mm-hmm. I'm not just throwing money out there. But what's great about cash and the fact that it is made in North Carolina. Uh, they're the only company to make rolling their own blanks. It is uh, men and women here in the states that are they're all handmade, uh, all carbon fiber, so extremely light, extremely durable, extremely sensitive. Uh, and I'm a big fan of just the overall company. Started in a garage, Mr. Matt Cashin, who is his PhD, PhD in chemical engineering. Wow. Got out of school and loved to fish and decided he'd take his that <laughs> education. I mean, he is a scientist and you know, he got into rolling his own fishing rod blanks and now he makes uh, you know his own blanks. They make their own epoxies. They make their own real. They make everything. Wow. Uh, so it's uh, it's a really unique company. I love the product. I get a value for the money. Mm-hmm. So again, check them out. Cash and fishing rods. Uh, it's actually cashinrods.com. Just Google them. Uh, go check. They actually just rolled out a couple new series. So uh, they've got some price points now. So for guys that are just getting the fishing that can't afford, hey, you know some of the higher end rods. They have a uh, just as great quality uh, with a great warranty with it, uh, but still in a lower price point. So uh, check them out. And that's C A S H I O N. I O N. So it's, f- it's like fashion, but with a C. All right. Cashinrods.com. Cool. C H 
C A H I O N rods.com and it's a cool cool uh, logo too i like it. yeah well it's uh, i'm sure they had somebody real smart i don't know where i, like I get it. one of those hats you know don i don't uh, know i don't know <laughs> i hope you like me i got a guy i mean i don't know i got a wildcast hat because i got a guy yeah, so yeah, i mean well, maybe you guys got a guy yeah go. we'll find you one let's see if i can find a guy yeah. all right well um what you got with you today? Some fall fishing. Uh, you got some uh, plastic baits and, uh, like you said, the umbrella rig. Yep. So last show we uh, we got off on some tangents, which were good, uh, yeah. but we didn't get to all the way. So uh, one of the pieces that I missed, uh, and so for all that are listening, go back and check out uh, the last one that we did, and this will kind of flow a little bit into that last uh, podcast that we did. But so this time of year, fall, moving into later fall, at those – the bait fish are moving back into the shallows, uh, and the bass are coming right along with them. So when a lot of people are thinking about deer hunting, you're still thinking about fishing right now. Well, I'm, I yeah, I never stop thinking about <laughs> it. <laughs> part of the addiction, Jason. Uh-huh. Part of the addiction. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I will get a duck blind, uh, you know, coming up in December and January some. But uh, really, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna fish pretty much yeah. year round. And if I have to go, you know, out of the state and go further south, that everything freezes over here, then you know, so be it. We're gonna chase fishing. Gre- yeah, we're gonna chase Mr. Green Jeans uh, wherever we need to go. So. And fishing I learned is, something yeah. about you today that you like that cold weather fishing too. And- I in winter months and it's it's miserable here's the, the more miserable that you are the better the fishing will be <laughs> i think i remember one time going out with you we were throwing the the umbrella rig and it was spitting snow yes and i was like what are we doing <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing yeah well it's, Whose uh, idea was yeah, this? it's I mean, if, if you prepare and dress accordingly it's better it's 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 still not I mean, it's cold, right? yeah, so I'm yeah. not going to oversell it. It's uh, when you're going down the lake at 30, 40, 50 miles an hour, and it's you know free. It's it's not very much fun. But the great thing about it is, one, the lake's clear. I mean, you're not dealing with any traffic because <laughs> nobody else is stupid as you are. Uh, there's very few of us out there. Uh, but more importantly, is those. Ba- I mean, they're just they are not expecting. You know, so they're not getting a bunch of pressure, and so the pressure, fishing pressure, greatly diminishes, and so you're more likely. Uh, two things happen: one, they gang up this that time of year, right? So they get all, you know, they all kind of get schooled up a little bit more, uh-huh. uh, and they're not getting near the pressure because, again, you, I mean, they, you may be the only boat that goes down that specific area that day, so, uh, or maybe even for a couple days. So that's. That's really good. And then you have big barometric pressure swings, and we're not going to get way off in the weeds what that means, but moon phases and barometric pressure have a lot to do with bass fishing. For guys that hunt, we all know about moon phases and yep. how that flows into – fishing's no different, right? It's all – they're living animals and creatures, I should say, and they're all depending on, on nature, and nature uh-huh. dictates a lot of what they do. So uh, the best fishing a lot of times you'll have, especially in this part of the country, is when it starts to snow. And when I mean, like, not just a little bit, when it starts snowing, man, the fish absolutely go crazy. And that's just a big barometric barometric pressure shift and change. Oh, uh, yeah. And it keys them, and, and you'll catch some of the biggest and most that time of year. So it's huh. a lot of fun. You just got to suck it up and, you know, suck Prepare it up, Buttercup. Yeah, get on, Buttercup. Go on, get out there and yeah. <laughs> put your motorcycle helmet on and run down the lake and <laughs> just close your eyes. It'll uh, be over soon. Yeah. For but sure. anyway, I, I I will fish pretty much year round. Um, like I said, I do slow down a little bit in December and January to get out the real foot and do some duck hunting, which yeah. you know is a lot of fun too. So all right, uh, we're gonna I'm gonna try to get through it all Let's this time. It. Last time I got, uh, I'll stop slowing you down. Well, it wasn't you. I kind of took a left turn. Should have took a right turn and got off on a tangent, which is uh, typical. But uh, that show we're talking about fishing the shallow, shallow being roughly six inches to six foot. Uh, give or take, that's kind of the range we're talking about. We talked about crankbaits, lipless crankbaits, and really good time to throw them. What we didn't get to was what type of soft plastic. Now, I will say soft plastic flipping, um, you know, just a creature bait or a brush hog, anything like that, a worm, smaller worm, uh, still works great. Don't get me wrong. Okay. Uh, you, this time of year, still work. Look for anything in the water, uh, any type of structure uh, that's in the water, uh, you know, a um, brush piles or fallen limbs or logs or stomp, anything like that. Now, the bass will still get on that. Uh, really, where you want to look for is start at the mouth of the creek and then work your way back, hitting the secondary points along the way. Throwing a crankbait, uh, flip or pitch anything that's in the water that you see. 
Absolutely. That'll be part of the overall uh, attack process. So you'll typically, this is what I'll do. And again, I can always talk about me and not get in trouble. Uh, I'm going to start on top water in the morning. Um, I'm going to try to cover as much water as I possibly can, and I'm going to work my way through the water column. So in the morning, I'm going to start on the top, and then I'm going to work my way down to typically that six-foot range, maybe eight-foot, depending on if you're at a, a deep water reservoir. But really, that's kind of the, the target zone that I'm focused on. And then I'm going to fish everything that's in front of me. So I'm going to be covering water, going, hitting those, really focusing on the main point and the secondary points, covering water. And then if I see something to stump, I'm going to throw crankbait at it, anything I can. And before I leave that area, I'm going to make sure I pick up a jig or I pick up a soft plastic and pitch to it a couple times, mm-hmm. just in case there is some fish there that's just not in the mood to chase or I didn't uh-huh. get enough reaction. That's how I'm going to work my way all the way back uh, to the back of the creek. Like, like the crankbaits you talked about in the last show, you match the color to the to the color of the water. Darker crankbaits for darker water, and lighter for lighter. Is that the same way with a with a, uh, a plastic? It really is. Okay. I, I mean, again, there's always there's always exceptions to every rule. But again, <laughs> talking in and big you know big wide brush strokes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the darker the water, the darker the color of the bait, uh, and that's up and down the spectrum. And all that means is you're going to get the darker water. You're going to profile. Right? They're not looking at necessarily the color because they can't see it as well. Uh, what they're going to see is a darker color will make a bigger, better profile in dirtier water. There's some great YouTube videos out there that really go into the nuts and bolts, and we're not going to go into it tonight. Uh, but you can really go out and you actually can see some of the color spectrums uh, and really work your way through it. So, okay. yeah, darker, darker the water. Uh, morning time, right? So darker the light, I'm going to use a darker color bait. Uh, it's really the only time that ever gets anything Again, we'll we'll kind of hit this. The only thing that really that really ever changes is if there's a shad spawn going on, or if you know um, that they're keying on a specific bait, such uh, for instance a if there's a bluegill spawn going on, uh, I'm gonna I'm because you know they're dialed into that. I'm gonna I won't follow that same pattern. I'll throw something white or I'll throw something with some silver uh, and just match it up to those specific times. But fundamentally, darker, darker, lighter, uh-huh. lighter. Uh-huh. All right. Okay. So I like uh, it. So we're gonna talk real quick on soft plastics uh, this time of year. The fluke. So a fluke style bait. Um, for those that are watching, uh, I'm a big fan of Zoom. Zoom flukes. They're really the, the kind of the founder of that. Uh, all a fluke is. It is a. Uh, I believe they're four inches long, give or take four, four and a half inches long. Uh, but it looks like a a bait fish or shad profile yeah so a little bit wider on the front and kind of goes off to a tail i love those on a creek they're great on a creek if they you're wading, are. fish uh, yeah. they're they're pr- well what's great about them is that you again you most of the time you fish them weightless so you'll just take uh from a hook size uh depending on if i know a normal size fluke i typically go with a four a four aught offset uh extra wide gap hook that's kind of the standard uh if i want to follow it faster i'll use a five aught um or sometimes I'll downsize if my if I use a shorter or like a junior, like a fluke junior, mm-hmm. if they're keyed on smaller baits, uh, I'll use like a three aught. But it's going to be that three aught to five aught, and it's going to be uh, extra wide gap. And all the gap means is it from where the hook point is to the bend of the hook, that gap is much wider because you got a pretty decent sized piece of plastic here, and you want that that plastic to have somewhere to slide up to when you set the hook on them. So right. that's all that that means. Three, three aught to five aught, uh, depending on fall rate and the size of the bait. But uh, you take it, you throw it out, and you just it's, you fish it. The way I fish it is just like I'd, how I'd fish a jerk bait. So I come up with a cadence. It's one pop, let it rest. Two pops, let it rest. Um, or, it, or, any, or any variation thereof. Whatever. I, I always recommend just experiments with it. Sometimes uh-huh. you'll pop. Sometimes I'll, if, if it's still a little bit warmer water temp, I'll work it fast. I won't even pause. It's just nonstop snap, snap, snap. And, and I'm trying to create a bait fish fleeing kind of yeah. uh, look to it. If it's a little bit starting to get a little bit cooler, if I'm fishing in the morning, I may pause a little bit more. But change up your cadence. Sometimes it's a two, one, two, one. Sometimes it's just a one, one. Sometimes it's a one, two, three. Just Sounds take- like a song. <laughs> well, it sounds like a rap song. Well, Killing last time, yeah, I was a rapper on the last segment. Killing so, it off, Jason. Yeah, so uh, you, yeah, just find whatever pop, the, pop. whatever the cadence is. Try a couple different ones, and once you kind of get a couple bites on it, stay with that one, uh, and you'll be the most productive. So that cool. And then the other thing that we'll talk about, which kind of will flow into the umbrella rig conversation we're about to have, is a swim bait. 
Hollow swim bait is uh, it's much like the fluke. It's a bait style bait fish style bait, and it just has what's called a boot tail. Uh, it's just kind of a rounded tail, and all that kind of does. Flat, it, isn't it on the end? Yep, it's uh, uh, this missile. Is, this is the missile baits. This is the shockwave. They make a three and a half, and they make a four and a quarter inch size. Uh, but it's called a boot tail. Um, and again, for the guys that are watching it. Uh, this is kind of what it looks like, but yeah, it's kind of smashed on it on the end. Yeah, uh, that's a great way to look at it. it looked yeah. like it was running backwards and smashing to a wall, and the tail got flat. That's a great way. So to look I can at. see that that action is gonna it's gonna be lots of wiggle in the back end of that thing, isn't it? It is. So not only do you have it, it 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 rotates back and forth, left to right, but it also that causes the bait to roll. Same way that a crankbait does. A crankbait, as it comes through the water, it rolls, and uh-huh. what it does is it creates that flash. Uh, that movement in that boot tail uh, or the swim bait tail gives that kicking action. Yeah. And so uh, a lot of times I'll take this, uh, if they're not biting the fluke, if they're a little bit deeper, uh, I will take a swim bait and then I'll just put it on a normal jig head. So typically, if I'm trying to stay shallow, uh, I'll stay in that, say, quarter ounce range, Mm -hmm. give or take, and then you can adjust your weight up or down depending on how deep you want to get it. But I like a quarter ounce. And because that way, if I want to speed it up and get a little bit higher in the water column of cam, or I can slow down and it will stay down a little bit lower. But again, we're targeting that roughly six inch to six foot depth range. So I don't want to, you know, a half ounce or something because this is not a bottom bouncing bait, right? This is going to be in that middle of the road water right, column. Right. And so a uh, quarter ounce is a good place to start and then uh, adjust from there. So not to throw people off, though, the fluke is a split tail, right? Uh, yes, a fluke is a it's a split tail where the the swim bait has that boot type shape at the end of it. Right. Uh, a fluke uh, really it just has a long appendage coming off the back that at the very end has two uh, yeah. much, much like a forked tongue mm-hmm. uh, on the back of it. Yep, and uh, real thick. And again, most of again the zoom and most of them that make this actually has a slit in the bottom the bottom of it. Uh-huh. And so what that does is it gives a bigger profile. Of the thicker piece of plastic, so more of a uh, a bigger bait fish. But when it comes to your hook, hides uh, in there, doesn't it? It hides in there, and more importantly, is it doesn't have as much to travel through. Because again, I'm going to text expose this. Won't go into what that means. Google it for guys that are wondering. I'm going to text expose my hook, which means the hook comes out of the back of it, and then just the very tip of the hook, I will I will stick in the top piece of the plastic. So. Mm-hmm. If I hit a branch or if I go through some weeds, or whatever, it's still completely weedless. But when I get a bite, that hook point has very little plastic to pop through. Right. But what the split does at the bottom, it allows that the hook to travel all. So, again, I don't have that much of a – it looks real thick, but it's not. So when it, the bite comes through, the bait will slide down. I don't have this big wad and chunk of plastic uh-huh. on my hook. That just gives one. I don't get a good hook penetration in the hook fish's mouth, but more importantly, is I don't give the fa- the fish any extra leverage, uh, gotcha. and that's what happens uh-huh. uh, when you throw a hook. A lot of the times, is you either get, didn't get a good hook set, or your bait gets balled up and it creates a, a, a pivot point where they can pop it loose. So, and you're not carrying bubble gum because your wife and your and your daughter like it. It's because. You that's said a, old hickory. That's a that's a winning color, I, I guess. I know. Listen, I, it's it looks like for guys that are listening, it looks like Pepto Bismol. <laughs> it is straight. I mean, it's pink. Not a real bright pink. It's kind of it's again Pepto Bismol pink. Yeah. But uh, for whatever reason, this time of year, September October, it is an absolute killer color. Uh, a lot of a lot of different places, especially Old Hickory. Again, we, we talk about Old Hickory a lot here just because we're based in Nashville mm-hmm. and that's kind of everybody's home lake. But the bubble gum color. I I don't know. I, listen, if I knew the the scientific answer, I would share. I don't know. I just know is that I tried a bunch of different colors, and I can catch them on white. I can catch them on bone. I can check catch them on. It's called Houdini. It's kind of a a green back with a little bit of red fleck in it, and kind of a lighter color. You can catch them on that. But there's something about the bubble gum color, hmm. for whatever reason. You still could catch them, but you're catching a a little bit higher quality or bigger fish. For whatever reason, um, and it's not just most time people think crazy colors. They think smallmouth, right? Smallmouth love, you know, the the methylates. They love the chartreuse. All these bright colors, because again, they're more sight feeders and more clear water. So that all makes sense to me. Yeah. Why bubble gum works in darker colored water <laughs> on old hickory? I have no clue. Uh, but I have lost more money to tournament anglers that are throwing pink <laughs> flukes. I, I, I wish I knew. Yeah. But it works. So it works. So go with it. Yeah. Put a, put a bag in your boat. 
Yep, you don't got to turn around and you ain't got to go buy, you know, 50 bags of it. Go buy a $3, $4 bag at your local tackle shop and give it a shot. Yep. And at least you'll have the option. If you're losing money, look at the guy. He probably got <laughs> a pink flute tied on. Uh, All right. We're going to keep rolling. Let's go. We're good? All right. We're going to talk umbrella rigs, A rigs, Alabama rigs, a lot of different things. And you, you got a Tennessee them. rig with you. I do have a Tennessee rig. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the chandelier. Uh, <laughs> of all Yeah, my wife bought one of those recently. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. hanging over our dining room table. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that you could take this uh, umbrella rig and, yeah, yeah. it would work because yeah, it's, sure it's big would. and massive. <laughs> and then we'll talk about, so we'll talk about the three-wire rig. We'll talk about the five-wire rig. Ooh, that's a lot of wires, rigs and wires. Uh, we'll talk about spin, I mean, all the different aspects of it to it, but... We're going to hit that high level, and then we're, the most important thing is to talk about the action of it. All right, that's the key. All these things look great. A lot of fishing um, baits and things that are made are designed to catch the fishermen and not to catch the fish. Uh, we're going to talk about how you actually catch them with it. So, diving right in, the Tennessee rig. So, the Tennessee rig is very much like the umbrella rig, or the and we're just going to call it the Alabama rig. Sure. But the difference being, Tennessee, you can only have three hooks. Right, you yep. could, that's that's what the the law is. That's yep. the law. Uh, and so a Tennessee rig is designed that it makes it where it's dummy proof, meaning that it only has three wires coming off of it, so you can only have three hooks. Um, this specific rig uh, and a lot of Alabama rigs or umbrella rigs, uh, some will just be straight wire, and you'll have a swim bait uh, attached to the back of it. But most, as that's how it was beginning and how it has evolved over the years, is that these little small willow leaf blades. So for guys that are listening, I uh, think take your spinner bait, your spinner baits uh, that have big willow blades. Uh, same exact blade shape. It's just shrink down to give or take about a one inch blade. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's attached to, attached to a swivel, which is attached to a clevis. All that means is, as you're reeling it, uh, you got your swim baits in the back uh, that are doing their deal with a hook. With a hook, um, but these are going. These little spinners are just going to give it that flash. Uh, not, give it sound. It will give it flash, and just give it overall school of fish kind yeah, of look. Right? It, it makes them again. It just gives the appearance of a, a bait ball. Uh, uh -huh. And again, this time of year, all the shad are still balled up, and you're just trying to mimic that. Yeah. Uh, great to catch suspended fish. Suspended bass are some of the hardest to catch. So, uh, off of bridge pilings, uh, where there's you know the bridge pilings in 60 foot of water, but the bass are hanging in that 10 to 15 foot range. An umbrella rig is absolutely killer. Huh. You throw it out and you just reel it back in. Now you're going to need some backbone. You're going to need some backbone for this this rig, right? You are. Uh, so again, I'll make a shameless plug for <laughs> passion rods. I'm just thinking your arm's going to be tired, but you got to have a rod that can handle it. You do. It. Uh, a lot of companies make an umbrella rig rod. Uh, Cashin makes one in their CRT line. Um, but yes, what when they first came out, everybody was just way overpowering them, mm. meaning they were throwing 65-pound braided line. They were throwing big 6-foot, six six, 7-foot, six 6-inch, or 7, 11-foot rods. And everything was just big and massive. Wow! Uh, and again, this you got to think this this technique has been around in saltwater for years and years and years. Uh -huh. But it's just made a transition over the last five to seven years in the bass fishing world. And so again, we're learning. This is all brand new. Um, so you think how, how long the plastic worm's been around? Mm -hmm. Hundred years, maybe. I don't give or take. Uh, this has been around five to seven. So it has evolved. And so what's happened is uh, the the rigs themselves have got compressed. They've gotten smaller. Uh, they've gotten lighter. Uh, they figured out new technology using, uh, for instance, this specific one has a resin head. So it's about, an, give or take the size of my thumb, but there's absolutely almost no weight to it. Yeah. So it's an epoxy resin. So um, technology, people experimenting have come up with ways to – Get that where you don't have to have some big, crazy, massive rod. And all that happens is you throw it for about an hour, and you're exhausted, and you take it, and you throw it down, and you pick up your jig. That's yeah. what happens. Uh, now now you can use a lot of the same rods that you already have. Okay. Or you can get a rod that's specifically designed for the umbrella rig that's going to have this, the, the parabolic bend that you need but also have the backbone. So at the end of the day, you can throw it for five or six hours and not be absolutely exhausted. Unless you're throwing the chandelier. <laughs> now, if you pick up the chandelier, by God, get, grab a broomstick and grab some rope and then tie this to that. Cause Each of those be. wires for our listeners is about a foot long. Uh, it's actually, Plus, yep, you got it. So it's, uh, the middle one is uh, 14 inches and all the other four are 12 inches. Okay. Uh, and it's, uh, 
It's big and heavy. It's five wires. It is five wires. So yeah, we'll we'll talk about it real quick. So uh, we talked about Tennessee, which was three wires, had all the uh, spinners on it. The uh, the massive one that I have here is uh, like I said, uh, Mr. Don brought it up. It's twelve to fourteen inches long, just mm-hmm. a wire, and you add another inch and a half. Uh, so you got roughly give or take a thirteen inch. Uh, and that's before you put on five and a half inch swim baits off the back of wow. it. So, <laughs> I mean, you're almost a 20 inch long bait that you're chunking out there. It will wear you out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, does this have its place? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it has a place in my tackle box. That's usually where it stays. <laughs> that's the place for it. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, I don't break it out very often. Um, and usually what I do, if I break this out. It's, or for very long. Probably. Yeah, it's very short time. only time I really honestly ever throw it is near the end of the season when they've seen everything else. Mm. Uh, and I just want something. Either you got to go really big or really small. Right, and that's and so I've got both variations. Uh, this one, you know, I, I may get an extra bite or two, but yeah. it, it doesn't it doesn't get thrown very often. But um, it looks like a chandelier. It's five wire, and only three of the wires actually have swivels with clips on it that will connect to a jig head and a swim bait. The other two wires actually have. It's called a hitchhiker. That's literally the name of it. It's called a hitchhiker for guys that are watching it. Little spring it. looking deal. Uh, yeah, it, it is a. Uh, it's it's designed for hookup trailers. Uh, or put a put a soft plastic onto a lure that doesn't have a hook. Right. And so that's really what you take this uh, little hitchhiker, you screw it into the swim bait, and that will attach directly to. I see. Yeah. Uh, and so you have a you have your piece of plastic, right? So you have your swim bait, but it has no hook, and so. Uh, Will you get hit sometimes and not catch a fish? Because yeah, they they will. They'll hit the dummy baits. But again, I'd rather have uh, I'd rather have more to the barrier and try to increase my odds. So uh, Jason uh, has now started the ending of this show, so I have to hurry. <laughs> Time is money. Time no. is money. All right. So here's really uh, this is my this is my go to. Uh, this is the same as the chandelier. It's yep. just a much more condensed version. It's in that five to six inch range. Uh, it has three hooks. It has two hitchhikers where I put my dummies. And again, how I will throw this, I will throw this on fluorocarbon, not braid. Uh, we won't go into the reasons why, but you're going to catch more fish if you throw it on fluorocarbon. Uh, and then also, it's going to be roughly 20 pounds. I'm going to throw it on a seven foot, six inch, heavy powered, fast action rod. Cash and rods, my personal favorite. But uh, again, you want that seven three to seven foot six inch long uh, rod heavy power fast action and you're going to throw it out and you're going to slow reel it but what the key is go as slow as possible and then the other thing is every now and then just give a little pop and what that pop will do is it will make that uh, that umbrella rig it'll flare oh yeah oh yeah think about when you're reeling a spinner bait and you kind of pop it and that skirt will flare uh-huh and you just make you're activating it same type of thing so throw it out go as slow as you can let it almost drift down and then every now and then just pop it and it'll flare that make that ball of shad look bigger it will it, 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 if you ever watch a ball of shad in the water it it, it kind of ebbs and flows and uh-huh. that's the same type of deal that you're doing so we're about out of time check out jason holland fishing all the social media platforms thanks for having me mr todd mr don mr jason faith your family and your fishing. Three most important things. Don't forget it. In Thanks that again. order. In that order. Yeah. Always that order. Yeah. Don't get it out of order. You will mess up. <laughs> I promise. I agree. And with that, we'll see you next time. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Stay connected with TWRA by visiting our website at tnwildlife.org. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hey, it's all about Tennessee wildlife. It's what we do. Tennessee Wildcast will be on the air again next week. We'll see you then.